How's it going? So in today's video, we're going to be talking about doing web scraping natively from your iPad without any requirement of using any kind of a desktop, whether it's a Mac or a PC. Now, please be sure to review the terms and conditions on these specific websites. Some websites specifically ask you not to web scrape, so please be sure to respect those. And remember, this is specifically just for educational purposes only. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so now in order to do this, you're going to need two different applications. So I'm going to use this application called Pi2 um, to do all of my programming in. And if you're interested in looking at different types of IDEs you can use on your iPad, I'm going to link a video above and you can take a look at that and give you some options that are paid and free. And the second one you're going to need is you're going to need to go to the App Store and download this application called the Web Inspector, which is free. And that's going to allow you to go ahead and look at the uh, elements tabs for different websites. So let me show you how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate to Costco.ca and I see this Beautyrest Queen Memory Foam Mattress. And what I really want to get from this is I want to get the product price and I want to get the discount and then finally calculate this price at the end. I can go ahead and just grab this price alone, but I'm not going to know whether this item is on sale or not. So I want to get both of these attributes first. So what you're going to do is once you've done this, you're going to go ahead and go to your extensions tab up top and that's where you're going to go ahead and open up Web Inspector. And you're just going to get hit, hit allow for a day. And you're going to get this tab on the bottom here, which basically is a, very similar to when you hit view source. And it's cool that you can do this directly on an iPad. And so what we want to do is I want to go ahead and search for this price, which is $749. So why don't we go ahead and hit this search button over here and hit in $749.99. And then you're going to see, it's going to show basically these arrows where that price is located. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. And I see that that's been highlighted up there. And I know that this is sitting in a span class of OP value. Automation ID is this, and that's the value. So really what I care about is span and then the class number, which is OP value. So we're going to go ahead and start doing a little bit of coding right now. So first and foremost, we're going to need some dependencies. So we're going to do from BS4, import beautiful soup as BS4. We'll import requests, import JSON, and then import base64. And I'll show you why we need that later on. So let's go ahead and create a quick function that's going to allow us to go ahead and pass in some kind of a URL and then get back the prices that we want. So we're going to say define get prices and we'll pass in some kind of a URL. And we're going to need some headers. And if you don't have headers that go into your request when you're doing web scraping, it's going to know that this is some kind of a bot. So you want to trick it, for lack of better words, and make it think like this is uh, somebody browsing on their browser. So we're going to hit Mozilla 5.0. And then we'll go ahead and get our request. So R is equal to request.get. And it's going to be the URL. And then headers equals headers. And then finally, we'll take that and we'll beautify it. I'll do r dot content because we want to get the contents of that request and then use an HTML parser. And so now I want to get the regular price, which is what we just found through the Safari browser. So we're going to go ahead and go soup dot find. And remember, it was a span. And let's just double check the class. So it's class underscore equals. And the class was called OP value. I go back here and type in OP value. And it doesn't matter if you use double quotes or single quotes. I just mixed that up, but we can just keep it consistent with double quotes or something. It doesn't really matter. It'll still work. And then we'll go ahead and print that out. Reg price equals to. Okay, let's see what we get with this. So it's regular price. And we'll go ahead and call that function down here. So we'll just do get price, oops. Prices, and then we'll pass in that URL from Costco. So let's go ahead and pass this in. Let's see what we get. So we have regular price. Let's try that. 
Oh, forgot to print that. So print rack price. All right, so I get this and just looking at this, I know this is a base 64 encoding issue. So we're gonna go ahead and encode this a little bit. So we're gonna go and type in base 64 dot base 60 or B64 decode because that's what I want to do. I want to decode this. And let's see what this gives us. And then it basically gives us the price, but it gives me this. Um, we need to further go ahead and decode this in UTF-8. And so that returns the price. So let's go ahead and just make this a float so that when I do my calculation, I'm not going to get any issues. So this basically is a float value. All right, that's great. So now let's go ahead and find that discount price that we were looking at. So I go back here and we know that discount price is 150. So we're going to go back to the search, type in 150. And there you have it. It's highlighted. So we know that it's in a span class of disk value. So let's go ahead and create that procedure as well here. So I'm going to create this slightly differently with an if statement because not everything is going to have a discount. So what we'll do is we'll say something like if a discount exists and let me just define discount. Discount is equal to soup.find and it's in a span table and it's in class. I believe it said disk value. Okay, so that's what discount is. So if that element exists, what we want it to do is we want it to go ahead and do disk and we'll do, we're we'll probably gonna have to do this again here. So let's go ahead and just copy and paste this to make it easy. Is equal to this whole thing, except it's going to be discount.text. And we're going to have to do all that fun decoding and stuff. We'll go ahead and then print. We'll say regular price is this and sale price is. And then we're just going to use uh, the format command here. So format reg price and, and here I'm actually going to say my reg price minus my discount price because I want to be able to get the promotional price at the end. So that is what happens if it exists. If it doesn't exist, we're going to go ahead and just say the discount is equal to zero and then we'll just print the regular price. Regular price and then we will go ahead and do formatting again. So that shouldn't be there. So let's go ahead and do this. And then we'll put in reg price because there is no discount available. So we're just going to do red price. Now you don't have to do this, but if you want to have an object of some sort, then you can just go ahead and return this into JSON. So we'll do reg price and that's just equal to reg price. And then finally we'll say discount is equal to discount. Okay. Let's try this out. So if this works, what I should get is a regular price and then a sale price. So let's try this out, print. And of course, I'm going to get an error somewhere and I forgot something here. Let's see. And my colon is on the wrong side. That's why. So let's try this again. So it says regular price is $749. So something obviously didn't work, yet, work here because we know that the discount does exist. Uh, and I know why. Because my class is not properly defined. So it's disk value like that. So there we go. Regular price is $749 and sale price is $599. And I can just go ahead and remove this print statement so that I get only this. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and again, this is now going to return some kind of an object for me. So I can say prices or something like that is equal to this. And if I just wanted the regular price, I can say print prices. And then I can just say reg price. And so it's only going to go ahead and print the 749. It'll still print this sentence, but It'll print 749 because I have this now that I can treat. Or I can just say I want disk and it should just print 150. There you go. So here's an example of how you can use your iPad specifically just for 
web scraping, which is cool. Well, there's no dependency whatsoever required with any kind of a laptop or Mac or anything. It's all done natively on your iPad. The other thing that I will suggest is right now the iPad does not support Selenium, which is my preferred choice of doing any kind of web scraping. So I still do rely on my computer to do that. But the fact that you can use Beautiful Soup for even something like scraping a large retailer is kind of cool. So hopefully you guys learned something. If you do, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.